Leonard, every physicist would agree on the effectiveness of mathematics in doing their physics work. I think that's undeniable. But would every physicist think that the effectiveness of mathematics is unreasonable? <laughs> that depends what you think is reasonable. It certainly is impressive, it's exciting, it seems miraculous. I think there's no theoretical physicist would ever think otherwise because one of the things that draws you in is that I can describe you with some numbers and letters and I do with some multiplications or differentiations or whatever of mathematics I'm doing and I can tell you where you're gonna be five minutes from now. Unfortunately, only if you're a billiard ball, but theoretically we could do that with you, your, your whole body as well. But when you do that, even when I was in high school, I found physics very boring. Uh, I don't, never liked Newton's laws. I, I mean, there's no surprises in Newton's laws. They describe what we see in the everyday world. So who cares? But I did find some, something miraculous in that these equations, you know, would, you know when, the, when the teacher threw the ball, they would tell where it's going to land. And I'm going, why would that be? And so people have been wondering about that. Uh, there's a famous paper written in the early 60s by a famous physicist named Wigner who asked that question. And, you know, nobody really knows, and everyone has an opinion. <laughs> it's, a, it's a subtle question because physicists use math, they misuse math. So it's not like we use math uh, that is, a um, mathematician would say is well-defined mm -hmm. and makes sense. Uh, some, some of the math we use does, but quite often physicists, especially in their quantum field theories, for example, the theories of elementary particles, we use these kinds of operators that are strictly speaking, you know, poorly defined, or we don't quite understand how they're defined mathematically. There's all these infinities that we have to get rid of, and we just find our ways of doing it, and the mathematicians look to justify it later. But when I was a graduate student, my advisor's whole uh, field and his whole, his whole devotion of his life was to find ways to derive physics from kosher, real mathematics using axioms. And so the mathematics that is so unreasonably effective isn't even necessarily uh, allowed by the, by, and we don't worry about it, okay? So in my opinion, why is it so effective? Well, you can describe things, of course, using language. Mathematics is, is much more precise than, than language. It's a kind of a language. I remember talking to Stephen Hawking about that, and, and he didn't like people talking about mathematics as being any different from a language because he didn't want people to be afraid of it. Hmm. But I disagree with him, not that I don't want I don't want people to be afraid of it, but I think it's different because built into the mathematical language that you have are rules of logic and reasoning. So when I write a sentence, as I do when I write books, I can make the next sentence anything I want. I can take the story anywhere I want. I have no one telling me what to do. So yeah, there, there's rules of grammar, but they can be played with, and I can generally make the point go any direction I want. When you write a first sentence or something, your first scrawlings about some theory that you're, or something you're in a problem you're investigating, that framework of mathematics that you have really restrains where you're going. In fact, more than restrains it, you might have to spend hours working out where it's going, but it's going somewhere and it's just going there. It's not going anywhere else. Now, I, may, I usually have a guess as to where it's going and sometimes I'm wrong. I'll do the calculations and I'm going, this isn't looking right. And I go, oh, because I misunderstood it back here because the logic of the, of the situation is built into the equations. So mathematics is a way of precisely describing things in a way that the logic and the answers are all built in and it's just up to you to extract them. Mm -hmm. So th th that is why, I, I, it's not really why it's so effective, but it's a justification for why it might be. The deeper question is why does nature behave that way? Who says nature should be logical? Who says the same thing should happen every time? Who says that if, uh, if A is more than B and C is more than A, that the, some transitive property should happen? <laughs> it, 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 I mean, it is that way in mathematics and it's that way in nature, but um, that's the... I think there are two categories of what you're talking about, both of which need exploration and comparison. One is the logical approach that if A is bigger than C and C is bigger than B, then A is bigger than B, you know, some sort of a, a logical. I think that is one kind of, another is the, the nature of the math to, to literally describe how the physical world works because there's no seemingly reason why that should happen. It's not a, it's not a logical contradiction 
that the, uh, the, the that equation should or should not find the yeah. Well, the, why the why doesn't it exactly like the inverse yeah. square law? Uh, why is it exactly that? Why isn't it you know instead of inverse square, inverse uh, you know square and a half to the third or or changing over time? I mean. What does it say about the world that the mathematics again? The, we have the logic, which is one kind of thinking, and then a description of the of the way the world is is another. Yeah. So those are two questions, and one is why why is math true, and the other question is why does the physical world behave in a yeah. logical way? Correct. I mean, very simply, if all electrons we say all of any particular particle are identical in physics. This electron, that electron, you can't tell them apart. Why is that? Why does this electron repel that one and not attract this one? Why does it repel all the other electrons? Why does it attract, why does it happen in the same place everywhere? And why do these numerical laws, like one over R squared, work? I mean, as a physicist, we can, you can have a, a heuristic explanation of a law like that. You can say, oh, you know, here's the mass, and you put a big sphere around it, and the area of the sphere goes like R squared. Mm -hmm. So if you're spreading out all that force evenly over the sphere, it goes down like one over R squared. Okay, but why, that, that makes sense. Why should it make sense to me as a human? In fact, does it make sense to bats? If there were aliens that were 10 times as smart as us, would they think of it that way? Would it make sense? Or would they look at it with completely different concepts and still be able to predict the outcomes of things? Maybe we're kind of fooling, our, we use our math within our structures to come up with our predictions and we think that's what's really happening. But maybe that's just what's happening in our heads and to some other alien with a brain that works differently, something completely different is happening. Is, is that possible? Because, I mean, it, it, we're still dealing in the same physical universe. Well, the, the results of the prediction should be the same, but how they get there could be 100% different. There's enough even in physics, you can even look at human physics and you can see, for instance, Feynman's formulation of quantum theory is that particles have, each particle has many different yeah, histories. Right. That's not Heisenberg's formulation of quantum mechanics. Now we can show mathematically that they're, they'll make always the same prediction, so they both work. But they're in terms of different concepts, but maybe there's some alien race out there that, that formulates it in a way that we wouldn't even recognize using something that, not even using math, using in God knows what that I can't even imagine. And they would also, if it, for it to work, would have to make the same predictions, but they could look at it completely differently. But in all cases, they're using a, 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 a way of thinking to describe not approximately how the world works, but actually how it works. Right. So now, under, underlying that, no alien race, whatever their methodology is, could have a successful theory if nature wasn't consistent. Right. Now, there are different things in nature, and let me just give two examples. One example you gave is that every electron is exactly the same, and you can't, how many electrons, 10 to the 80th in the universe, or 10 to the 90th photon, whatever it is, they're all exactly alike. Now, I can't make uh, you know, two, uh, two, two pieces of wood alike, and so here you have 10 to the 80th or 90th things that are exactly alike. That's one kind of thing in the universe. The other is the orbits of, uh, of objects, planets, asteroids, uh, comets, uh, People used to think that they had to follow some platonic perfection, and then it was determined they were all accidents, they all obey the law of gravity, but they have very different kinds of orbits. And, and you can't predict those orbits from first principles. So those are two very different kinds of characterizations of the universe. One is this absolute uh, 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 identity, and the other is sort of the contingent relationships based upon all sorts of random processes, although obeying some sort of gravitational rules. So how do you use mathematics in both of those? Well, what's going on there is that on the very fundamental, it's simple. The electrons are all the same. They have the same attraction. They behave in the same way. And then we have our theories of all the particles and all the forces. Orbits have to do with the macroscopic world. I was going to say the real world, but it's, uh, it's, it's not really that one is more real, but, it, but it's the world that we experience. And that's, the planets are made of gazillions of particles, and, and so is the sun, and, all the, and there's many planets. It's much messier when, that, when, that, when you look at conglomerations of things. So if a planet was just a billiard ball orbiting, uh, orbiting the sun by itself, we could calculate that and follow Newton's laws. You start putting in more planets, and they're all pulling on each other, it starts to get messy. 
little perturbations, little disturbances or errors in our measuring of their position start to add up, and so pretty soon you can't even accurately calculate where they're going to be some years from now. Uh, so th that's just practicalities of, of doing calculations in physics. Uh, but on the most fundamental level, things are much more ordered and well-defined, and they follow very simple mathematical laws, and it's, it is like a miracle <laughs> if you don't believe in God. If you believe in God, you have an answer. <laughs>